Hello, welcome to episode 33 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. Welcome everybody. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk. And today I'm going to chat to you about all the crafty things. Uh, so I'll just give you a little summary of what I'm going to talk about today. I've got some announcements to make. I've got a few bits and bobs of knitting, including FOs and whips. I've got some sewing, including some dressmaking and some sort of... It's kind of quilting. <laughs> I've got a blast from the past, my normal gadget, and I'm going to mention Ask Me Anything questions, but I'm actually going to do those in a separate video um, for you next week. And then I've got a little bit of up shop update news. I uh, won some bobbin lace. I forgot to put that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that just after the sewing. So we've got 3,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everybody who's subscribed. And because of this, I want to do a celebratory giveaway. So if you guys um, make a comment below, give the episode the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will draw for a prize. And the prize will be a sock size bag in this beautiful batik fabric, um, which has got this beautiful blue on it and a little heart progress keeper on the zip and this is lined with a white Egyptian cotton with a pot and pocket on the inside and it'll come with this turquoisey bluey green yarn that goes really well with some of the tones on this bag so if you want to win this bag and yarn if you pop a comment below um, and to say what you're looking forward to this spring because it's a kind of a spring themed set there um, and make sure you've subscribed and give the video the thumbs up and you could win so thank you so much for everybody joining in with the finishing all the whips in January sort of little knit along that we've got going on in the Ravelry group I didn't say I was going to draw prizes but I think I will um, so I'm going to draw one winner who will win a pattern of their choice off Ravelry up to the amount of um, ten dollars so I shall contact you via Ravelry rather than announcing it on here and we are soon to be starting well after I've finished recording the podcast I'm going to start opening the thread in the Ravelry group for the Christmas craft along so the Christmas craft along will start today as soon as I finish recording this podcast I'll go over to the Ravelry group and start the group discussion so it's going to start at the 1st of February and run right until the end of November so we can get all our Christmas stuff that we need to do prepped ready for Christmas and then December we can relax <laughs> I found that just this, just before this Christmas, I didn't have time to sit and really enjoy the little minis that I was getting in my advent calendar. So by doing this sort of Christmas craft along, I'll have done all the things I need to make before then, so I can relax. <laughs> so we're going to do that starting from the 1st of February, and I'm not going to have a finished objects thread, it's just going to be a discussion thread that people can just chatter in. And every month I'm going to draw, out of that month's posts, I'm going to draw one person to win a prize. Um, and it'll be a different prize each month. So come and chat about all the crafty things that you're doing for Christmas, for the Christmas craft along. Uh, it can be anything, knitting, crochet, sewing, I don't know, needle felting, absolutely any crafty thing. It can be woodwork, card making, anything. We all want to know what you're up to. Give us each other ideas. It'll be really, really interesting to see what everyone's going to be um, prepping for Christmas next year. So there we are. Come and join our Christmas craft along. So in regards to the Christmas craft along, I've just started uploading sort of Christmassy related um, sewing or, well, craft projects basically. And the first one is a Christmas tree. And I shall show you my finished object later in the sewing section. So we'll talk about that a bit later. I keep looking at my list. I've got lots of things to remember to say today. Um, I've also got a new knit along that's going to be starting on the 14th of February for Valentine's Day. And it's basically going to be a Valentine's Day cast on and it's a sock cast on. If you knit socks with my yarn you do get two entries for that. But I will talk about that a little bit later when I show you my pattern that I've been knitting on. So that's for, to do with sort of craft alongs. I've got something very exciting to tell you about. My friend Anne, who's dropped all the stitches on Instagram and Ravelry, etc., has organised a retreat, a fantastic knitting retreat. So I'm actually going to be teaching at this retreat and I'll be teaching alongside 
Nathan Taylor. How cool is that? <laughs> so Nathan's going to be teaching two classes, one on double knitting and one on strantasia, which I believe is when you use stranded colour work in combination with intarsia. But I'm not 100% sure on that, so you'll have to check on the website. Um, so the other teachers include Anne herself and she's going to be teaching um, knitted jewellery, which I think is really interesting. And I'm going to be teaching Dorset Buttons, which will be fab. So I'm going to be enjoying making lots of little samples for that course. And the retreat is basically two days of classes. Um, it starts on the 11th of May and it goes to the 13th of May. And it's in Darlington. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. So that's in the north of the UK. Um, so Friday people arrive and you sort of relax and have dinner. And then the main courses uh, are on the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, there's also going to be some people selling stuff there as like a little, I suppose you call it a trunk show in America. I don't know what you'd sort of call it here. Um, but Catherine from Craftenoon Treats is going to bring some of her bits and bobs, her yarn and some stitch markers, etc. And natural born dyers, which I haven't actually heard of before. So I'll be excited to see what sort of things they dye up. And the venue is called Redworth Hall Hotel um, and in Darlington, as I said. And you can find details uh, on the website. I will pop a link below because it's quite a complicated address. Um, and you can just follow that link straight to the website with all the details on it. But it's really exciting because Anne is actually charging just, um, she's not making any profit on this. So the charge for two nights, bed and breakfast, for the Friday night dinner, the, the lunch and dinner on Saturday and the lunch on Sunday, and all your tuition comes to £425, so it's very, very um, good value for a retreat like this. It's a non-profit sort of thing, but some of the money, I think, if she does make extra, will be going to charities. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what charities they are, I'm really sorry, Anne, but I think all the details are on the website anyway, so follow the link below. One thing Anne did ask me to say to you if I did mention the retreat on the podcast, if you do pay by PayPal, make sure that you do the friends and family rather than the business selection because she gets charged um, and that because when it's not a profit sort of organised um, event, it, it, it does cost her um, extra and she'll probably ask you to pay that if you do make a mistake of doing that incorrectly, I'm afraid. So... Just remember, if you do pay by PayPal, to select the friends and family payment option. Um, you can also pay by bank transfer. There's all the details on the website for that. So there we go. So hopefully some of you guys will come and join us. So there's there's only 14 places and there's already some already gone. So I, hopefully if you're interested, it's best to just go and look um, as soon as you can. And you can email Anne, she's very helpful, she's very quick to answer her emails as well, so there we go. So the lovely Tina from Simply and Stitches had put up a video for her Res Solutions. So it's basically the sewing things that she wants to get up to in the next year. And she's tagged me in it. So I'm going to do a video next week um, between the podcasts um, actually saying what my resolutions are. That would be nice and fun. So thank you so much, Tina. I feel honoured to be, to be nominated. Thank you. <laughs> I think most other people have done it already. So uh, that would be interesting to do. So watch out for that. Well, that's enough of the administration. Let's get on to the good stuff. So first of all, I'm going to start with the knitting section and I've got a couple of finished objects to show you. And you can see I'm wearing one. I shall stand up so you can see how I've got it on at the moment. I quite like how these edges are showing up here with the sort of uh, sawtooth edge along the edge there. And this is the Gonyev shawl um, and it's by, by the lovely Ruth McCain who's Knitterarium on Ravelry and Instagram. And if I show you... In, in all its glory. I have blocked it all out. I've probably blocked it a little bit harsher than I should have done because you these stitches actually when I'd knitted them they were very sort of soft and squishy but I really wanted to see that beautiful pattern that's in those stitches there. It's a nice simple pattern um, along the main part and then there's a lovely um, edge along three sides of it, so the long edge as well, and it's made out of a lace weight yarn, and it's in the Malabrigo lace in the Bobby Bobby <laughs> the Bobby Blue colorway. It's difficult to say. 
so there we go and I'm so pleased that I finished this I've had it on the needles a year and then I'll I'll do a bit and then I'll have put it down and got distracted by other things but I was determined I think I actually did about quarter of the length of the shawl in the time since the last podcast so I'm really pleased that I've managed to work away on that and I finally got a finished object I'm going to put it back on because I look a bit drab in a grey t-shirt without a nice bright blue <laughs> shawl to wear so I've been wearing it just wrapped like this I think because I'm quite a tight knitter um, it probably came out a little bit shorter than how other people knit because I didn't do a gauge swatch because it was a shawl type thing <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really pleased with that and I might actually wear uh, a little shawl pin there because that would look really nice I think so I'm really pleased about that well, I'll have to sip in my tea right so I've got another finished object and this is to do with the pattern that I'll be releasing for the Valentine's cast on again I've chosen a pink and the pink really doesn't come up properly on my <laughs> on my screen this is a very bright pink here whoops dropping my socks and this is the pattern that I'm going to be releasing for free on Valentine's Day for our little Valentine's knit along and it's basically just a simple heart in like a lace pattern and a V for Valentine so they're called V for Valentine socks well, at least that's what I think I'm going to call it I need to just double check on Ravelry that no one else has called their pattern like that so they're a nice simple pattern other than a little bit of lace to get you, keep you interested um, you could of course make them a little bit longer than this um, but um, it's up to you really so that's my little gift to you guys for um, supporting my shop and watching the podcast these have actually been knitted by my test knitter, Liz. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. I'm, I've cheated a bit, but I did do a swatch in a white yarn so I can show you how it comes out in a more plain. You can probably see it better on the camera, actually. So that's how um, the stitch um, pattern comes out. Um, and that pattern, like I said, will be available on the 14th of February, ready for our sort of knit along. So I thought that we'd do it. You don't have to knit my sock pattern. You can knit any sort of socks that remind you in some way of Valentine's Day. It can be any reason, absolutely anything. I'm just interested to see what reasons you guys come up with. Um, but I just thought it'd be nice to have a heart pattern for you to have a go at if you wanted to. So like I said, well, at least I think I said it in the intro to the podcast, um, if you knit with my yarn, you'll get two entries in the FO thread and I'm going to draw a prize at the end of that time. Because I think it's sometimes a bit difficult for people to get socks finished in a month, I think I'm going to leave the, the knit along going on for six weeks just to give people plenty of time to finish their socks. So I'll have um, a discussion thread so we can chat about all our socks that we'll be casting on and then the FO thread I'll open after a week or so and you can start popping in your finished objects and I'll draw a prize winner from the finished objects thread at the end of the six weeks. I don't know what six weeks is at the, on my, at the top of my head so I will pop um, the date uh, in the Ravelry group thread so you can see when it finishes. So there we are. So I've cheated a bit this is not these aren't actually knitted by me. <laughs> Thank you Liz. So that's my finished objects. Oh, I haven't arranged my shawl very well, have I? Look, that's not good. There we go, that's better. <laughs> Another sip of my tea. I'm obviously feeling very thirsty today. Right, so we're on to works in progress. And I showed you last time that I've been working on my my own hand-dyed sock yarn, this stripey, well, like a micro-stripe, which is called Take On Me Callaway. And I decided to pair it up with some lovely bright yellow. I was contemplating doing a pink, but I wanted to use some of the minis that I'd got rather than dyeing up some more yarn or stealing a whole skein. <laughs> and I picked this up. This is from lovely Cassia from Rainbow Cloud dyed this lovely yellow yellow yarn and I had this in one of her little mini skein sets so that was really lovely um, and I happen to have two 10 gram minis so that should be plenty for the heels and toes um, for the pair um, I think I wish I'd have done a yellow contrast cuff as well I'm not sure mind you that might be too much but I think that's a nice bright pop compared to the black and white yarn so like I said I have got this is the yarn from my hand dyed 
from, from my hand died. This is the yarn in its skeined form or hanked form, I suppose. <laughs> um, with the black, grey and cream underneath there. So I have got some of this in my shop in tonight's update if you're interested. So I'm really pleased with those. And it's really lovely because I know that Cassia from Rainbow Cloud, who this yarn was dyed by, has actually got some of my yarn. She was knitting some and she was doing a yellow heel too. So I've totally copied you, Cassia. <laughs> Um, so it's nice that I've got your yarn and as my heels and toes. So there we go. I've got one of those finished and I've just started casting on my second. Oh, it's, it's jumped out of the bag. I had it raced, rested on top ready to show you. So I've just started my next um, cuff. I'm doing these top down. I'm knitting these on 2.75 millimetre needles because I knit really tightly. My gauge on 2.75s normally the same as about what everyone else gets on 2.5 millimeter needles and I think these are my favorites these higher higher sharps um because I really like the very flexible cable light needles and very sharp ends because I really like a nice sharp tip to my needle because I knit so tightly really I know that um, Mina from the Knit and Expat said that she'd actually bent some of her higher higher sharps um even though I knit really, really tightly, I don't, I've never bent them and I've had mine quite a while now, so I don't know. She must knit super aggressively. <laughs> she knits so quickly though, it's crazy. I wish I could knit that quickly, I could get so many things done. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I'm on to my second work in progress and I've made quite a good dent into this. It's going to be difficult to show you because I've got it on quite a short cable. But this is my water lily top that I've been knitting. And I'm knitting this in the round from the bottom up. And it's curling up at the bottom. So it's difficult to show you. There we go. So I've knitted that much so far. See if I can show you the decreases. Where have they gone? There we go. I've tried to make the decreases a bit of a point of interest. I'm going to have to <laughs> lean this on myself so you can see because it wants to curl up. Oh, there we go. You can see that I've done decreases in like an angled, well, quite close together that I think I'm going to put on the front of the garment just as a bit of a point of interest rather than having the decreases at the sides. So I'll have to see how that comes along because I've never tried this before. Hopefully I haven't um, got the stitches off the needles, which I have. Quick, pick them up. Phew, saved them. <laughs> so this is knitted with a beautiful blue this is a bluey gray color and it's i think it's called it might as well be spring i'm pretty sure that's what it's called yep might as well be spring and it's from ginger twist studios and it's on her yakety yak base which has got merino yak and silk and i'm sure i've said that on loads of podcasts now so everybody probably knows that off by heart <laughs> but i'm knitting these on my higher higher sharps as well and I haven't actually spent a major amount of time knitting on that so I'm pleased with how far I've got because I was focusing on getting uh, this finished so I could have it finished for the end of January um, so I actually I had casted that jumper on or top on before um, oh must have been about a year but I did rip it out so I'm not going to count it as an old whip <laughs> At least I'm sort of sorted my head out and I'm back on track with getting on with some of my whips that have been on the needles a while. So that's, I think that's all my works in progress. Yes, it is. That's unusual. <laughs> I have got a couple of other things that I've been working on. But I hadn't um, worked on them between the last time I spoke to you guys. So I'm going on to the sewing section now. So I've done a little bit of dressmaking, although it's not particularly interesting, I'm afraid. Barbara, do you want to come and show us what I've been up to? Thanks, Barbara. So she's back in some in pyjama bottoms. I'm addicted to this pattern. This is the Sew Over It Ultimate Pyjamas pattern. And I, this is my second pair that I've made. I showed you a, a sort of pink and grey version last time. And I picked up some plaid material from my local sewing shop, which is called Sew so Simple in Taverham. And I had to have two metres because I thought that would be plenty um, to make some pyjamas out of. Although... 
I didn't have enough to make sure that the back panels match the front panels. I just had to go with it, but I managed to match the two front panels together. Next time, if, I think if I get two and a half metres, I'll have enough to make sure that I can pattern match the back as well. Although it does seem a little bit of a waste sometimes, we'll have to see. But I'm really pleased with how this has come out. The pattern matching at the front isn't absolutely perfect, but at least I've got the lines going across here, which is okay. I spoke to you last time on the last podcast and I said that the waistband seemed a little bit high on me so I just took um, about an inch or so from the pattern pieces of the trouser legs and that fits really nicely now because I'm a bit short in the body <laughs> um, but I'm really pleased with those and I think I'm just going to make one more pair and I'll have enough pyjamas to wear handmade ones all the time so that'll be really nice this is a plaid material rather than a brush cotton and I think, I think I do prefer the feeling of the brush cotton against my skin but this is really nice too I made sure I washed my fabric before I um, made them up which is, is always good because sometimes I think oh I'll just make them not a good idea <laughs> and I've just used my overlocker to finish the pieces off inside and then just top stitched the, um, the hem down on the, the leg um, this has got a nice bit of elastic in, so it's really cosy. But I decided to do a tie as well. So, i to tie this a bit. I haven't um, tied your bow up very well, have I, Barbara? <laughs> so, I decided to do a tie made out of the same material as the fabric again. In the pattern, it does say to use ribbon, but I thought that this would be more durable. Um, but I'm definitely going to make another pair, as I said. And it matches my shawl. How cool is that? <laughs> oh dear. Um, as you can see, Barbara is wearing a hard rock t-shirt. And this one I thought would go nicely It's um, with these pyjama bottoms. This is a t-shirt that I bought from um, Hollywood when I went with my friend Liz. Hi Liz! <laughs> and I don't wear this sort of every day anymore but I thought it'd be nice to wear for bed and even though it's gone a little bit bobbly it's nice to have sort of memories and it's got a really cool patch at the back where it's printed with Hard Rock Cafe Hollywood which I think is really nice. Oh! Your bum Barbara! <laughs> she can't actually fit trousers over her leg because she's only got one leg, bless her. Um, so thank you very much Barbara. <laughs> So still in the sewing section, I've got some sort of quilting that I've been doing. So I've recently bought some curtains because I hate making curtains from scratch. <laughs> and actually, often if you buy good quality pre-made curtains, you can shorten them and make them fit and they're much cheaper than buying the fabric separately. And I hate crawling around on the floor <laughs> trying to adjust massive curtains. So I bought a set of curtains which were 90 by 90 and to go in our bedroom and the drop that I wanted on them was only about 70 inches I think or it might have been about 60 so I shortened those curtains and I had lots of fabric left over so I wanted to make a cushion to go with our bedroom so I've made some vermicelli well, I've done some vermicelli on the pad so this is just a piece of the curtain fabric and I've put some wadding underneath and then I did the vermicelli quilting on it which is just basically wiggly I do do a more sort of blobby wiggle if that makes sense <laughs> it's more rounded at the edges of the wiggle at the style that I tend to do it rather than standard vermicelli and then I layered it up so that I'd got another piece of fabric on the inside so that the wadding wasn't exposed. And then I'm, I did some back panels um, that, that aren't actually free motion quilted. And I did some piping across there as well, which I think finishes it off nicely. So this is going to be in our bedroom and I'm also going to make a bed runner. So I'm, th I'm hoping that this put the pre puts the pressure on that next time I podcast I'll have a bed runner to show you as well as this. And if I finish it, I might give you a little tour of how the bedroom looks with the bed runner in there as well. We'll see. It's not particularly exciting. <laughs> we've just got white bedding, so I think that goes nicely with it. Also, we've got a third part of sewing that I've been doing. I know this is Christmassy, but this is all to do with the Christmas craft along that we're going to be doing. And I've 
put up a tutorial on the channel. I will pop a link below if you find it difficult to find it. But I put up a tutorial how to make this folded patchwork Christmas tree. Um, and it's just, it's so much fun. You can actually, they're ma basically made of triangles of fabric. Um, once you've machine sewed so the two triangles of fabric together, you then do the rest with hand sewing. So it's a lovely portable project to do when you're going over to visit friends or whatever. Um, I've done these with some little bells, but I've actually, I explained it more in the tutorial. So if you're interested in looking at that more closely, if you pop over and see the tutorial. So that's all my sewing for this time, but I have got a little bit of bobbin lace and I've got to go right over there to go and fetch it. Hang on. <laughs> There's too much stuff out on my surface, ready to show you guys. So I got this book on Bruges bobbin lace a little while ago. And I really wanted to do a nice simple piece out of here. So this is what I really want to do. I'm trying not to show you all the instructions. <laughs> there we go, so it's a heart shape. And I thought I'd do this for Adam for a Valentine's Day. A bit romantic. <laughs> Whether I'll get it finished, I don't know. I thought that I'd layer it up and do a textile art piece to put in a frame on the wall. And I've made a start on it. I've started the edge section and I've used an Ecru colour of thread and this is um, DMC, DMC Philodontes thread. If you look very closely, this bobbin here is the one that my friend Joe gave to me. Thank you Joe. <laughs> so that's going to be hopefully a finished object by the time I show you in the next podcast because that will be around Valentine's Day. This section here is something a little bit different from what I've done before so that will be interesting to do. Uh, hopefully next time I have a work on it I'll try and take some footage to show you on the next podcast but that's my bobbin lace and the bobbin lace section goes nicely into the blast from the past section I was looking in my drawer and I found that I'd got several of these bookmarks um, that I'd made from bobbin lace and I put these in the plastic containers just to protect them um, but they've got two different colours of bobbin lace that I've used and this is a simple torsion ground in the mostly and there's a little bit of a uh, whole stitch here and half stitch here you can see the difference so this on the edge section is called torsion ground this is called half stitch because there's little you can see more of an open weave and here is a whole stitch and you can see how the two colours work a little bit differently so there we go I've actually made quite a few of these and I don't end up using them very often I really should I end up using scraps of paper which is ridiculous isn't it <laughs> So we've got our gadget next. Now I've been to the sewing shop recently and I saw this. So this is another pokey thing. <laughs> um, it's got a button gauge on as well to help you work out how much shank you need to leave to sew buttons on which I think is cool. I haven't used that um, feature of it yet but I noticed that there was nice sort of point to this edge here for turning out squares when you sew them and then turn them inside out and it's by Hemline this is the packet and it's called a point turner and I found this actually this is a better one than I've used before I used to use um, a piece of plastic that was from one of those modeling K kits for children and I think that this is actually a better tool it was £1.80 and it's from Hemline and there's the, the make there we go so I definitely recommend getting one of these and as they're only £1.80 it's not too bad either so that's good. that's a good thing I think that's it for the gadget and then we're over to the ask me anything section now I've had a couple of questions about how um, I wash my hand knits so I think I'm going to do a separate short little video which I'll release next week um, and I'll also release that alongside the um, the resolutions section that I've talked about earlier um, so I'm going to do that as a separate video because I think that'll be interesting for people to look back on when they're searching for something later and then we've got confessions section. I forgot to say about this in the intro. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I've got a pile of fabric here because on the last episode, I completely forgot that I'd ordered some fabric. <laughs> right, number one. This is some lightweight jersey that I picked up from my local um, fabric store or one of the fabric stores a little bit further away from me, actually. Um, they were stopping doing some of the fabrics... Um, 
that they'd stocked so they're actually only doing cottons I think and this jersey was on sale for £2.50 a metre so I picked up a couple of metres and I thought that that would be a brilliant practice to do the Agnes top like a wearable muslin as they call it um, because I really like these sort of tealy colours and the pinks together it's a bit of a weird print on there but I thought as it's only £5 for two metres it'll be great for practicing the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons so that's fabric number one. I have bought a couple of boring fabrics. So I put an order into Fabricland just to get some um, sort of reasonably priced trouser fabric because I wanted to make some in my make nine. I wanted to make some trousers. So I ordered these two fabrics from there. Now this one, I don't know if it's actually coming up as gross as it is. <laughs> This is the most electric, shiny, horrible blue. It isn't actually coming up as bad as it, it looks on the screen. Um, but it didn't, ca this isn't really, I don't think I'd wear this outside the house, but I might make like a test out of this blue, a sort of denim, stretch denim fabric um, for the ultimate trousers by sew over it, just to see how they fit. Um, and then I can make some in some nicer fabric. I also purchased this black stretch cotton, which is a bit boring to show you, but I thought, I ordered it thinking it was going to be a bit more stretchy than it was. It's, there's not, there's hardly any stretch in it. So for me, I need trousers to be stretchy. <laughs> so these are now going to be trousers for Adam. It's actually quite a nice quality cotton, um, but it's not going to end up as something, I, well, what I intended it to be to start with. I also made an order from Sew Over It in the sale actually, in the January sale and this is absolutely beautiful, I've already washed this and this is a a crepe, that's the word, it's a crepe but I don't think they've got any more, I'm really sorry to show it you when they've got none left but it's a beautiful drapey crepe I suppose you can see it like that. I look like a fool waving <laughs> it around. Um, but it's a gorgeous drapey crepe in this beautiful pink and sort of tealy blue or steely blue um, floral pattern. And I thought that this would be lovely to make the blossom top by Sew Over It. Now I know it's for pregnant people, <laughs> but I think that the the style of the um, blossom top is quite flattering to somebody with a large, large bust and a bit of a belly. Because <laughs> obviously uh, pregnant people have got a bit of a belly, so I thought that that might be quite flattering. I might adjust it slightly so it isn't, um, it isn't so um, tailored for a pregnant person, if you see what I mean. So I'm li really looking forward to making that. And I went to... Norwich um, Market Hall, well not Market Hall, Norwich Market and I saw that I actually seen this stall on the market a little while ago and I don't think I've bought any fabric from there but I noticed that he got a couple of really nice fabrics. I think I've got his card so <laughs> he's not very technologically advanced bless him. His name's Barry and he's Barry Reed Fabrics on Norwich Market. He doesn't um, sell fabrics online at all um, but you can obviously go there and see what um, sort of things he's got and he's quite helpful um, so I thought I'd show you what I've got from there so I've got this really pretty pink and green see the pinks aren't coming up as vivid there those bright bright pink areas where there's a bit of a dull pink here it's much nicer in real life so I thought I'd do another sort of blouse type thing with this one I might also make a blossom top out of that as well seems as if I if I cut the pattern out it's well worth doing a couple of versions of it so there we go I also bought from the market from Barry this wool mixed with um, cotton from to make some Adam some really warm trousers for winter because he's always really cold I'm gonna be embarrassing now he <laughs> He wears this thermal underwear underneath his trousers and I thought well if he wears the a pair of trousers made out of this wool fabric as well it'd be even more warm. <laughs> so there we go. Um, I, I have washed these fabrics already so they've washed up really well so far but I will let you know how I get on sewing them. And I think that's all my confessions. It was a bit naughty but I've got plans for everything so I'm okay. And it's part of my make nine things as well, so it's good. Although the blossom top wasn't on my make nine. I didn't put it on the make nine because I thought it was a bit embarrassing having a pregnancy top on your list. <laughs> oh dear. Although I'm not pregnant, I'll just make that clear. 
Um, so that's all my confessions. I've got shop update next if you'd like to hang around for that. But if not, I'll see you guys later. So my shop update is this evening, the 1st of February at 7 o'clock. And I will have some more of my Take On Me yarn, which is the one I've knitted my socks with that I showed you earlier. This one. And some more of the Strawberry Fields Forever. I haven't got any more of the, any new colourways just yet, but I'm hoping to get some in the shop next week. If you are looking to have a mini that coordinates with this yarn, I can dye some up specially for you. Um, so contact me if you're interested in that. And I've got a few bags um, that I've got in the shop. This is already in the shop, actually. It's one of my badge bags in a, in a nice durable grey fabric with a sort of soft calico lining in there. And with these ones, I've got a little handle and a drawstring. And they're a sort of a medium size. Uh, the ones that will be in the shop at the shop update tonight will be these stripy ones so they're pieced with a free motion quilting design over the top um, and they're the same on both sides basically so we've got this one and inside the pocket has is made of some of the pieced oh I'm going to get it out some of the pieced um, sections that are from the front this is not very well planned <laughs> there we go so each of these have got a similar patch po po patched pocket on the inside. I'll just give you a quick view of what patterns I have. And there's only actually one each of these. So if you are interested, it's best to snap one up straight away on the update. I shall have some more bags next week. I'm hoping next week to have a few more sort of Valentine's themes um, heart bags with the free motion design that I normally do so that if anybody fancies a sort of Valentine's themed um, bag um, then they can order one. If you want ones in with specific um, colours or something just contact me and I can do your custom order. So I think that's everything that I've got to show you with the shop update. But I did want to mention that two of my friends have opened Etsy shops. So I wanted to share um, that with you guys. So one of them does a lot of bobbin lace bits and pieces and, and weaving. And her name is Tanith's Crafts Gifts on Etsy. And I'll pop a picture up here of one of the examples of some of the things she makes. Um, so she's just opened her shop. Um, very fresh and new so I don't think she's had any orders yet but she's a really lovely girl and I really like the quality of her um, bobbin lace so if anybody's interested in that um, pop over to Etsy and I've also got a lovely friend called Jo who's just opened a really nice shop on Etsy selling um, ponchos so they're made of a, a beautiful tweed fabric on the outside um, and lined in a nice quality cotton on the inside. So I'll pop a picture up here of those designs. And I think she's got a few bits and bobs of hand-knitted things as well if you're interested in that. I've had this big bit of hair that keeps jumping out. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope to join you in a couple of weeks with, with another update. Um, and I hope you have a lovely, lovely crafty week. Bye!